I got bullied basically. And they'd be like, oh, you want the fat and gravy, do ya? Mimicking me like this. There's a poster of my face on the wall and it was mm. like, if you're friends with this guy, beware or something like that. What did you do? I, and just became a really rebellious teenager. Me and the coach just didn't get on, really. Oh. They were like, yeah, there's no professional contract for you here. Even though I was leading one score, leading one taker. How did you feel when you got sacked? That was like the final story. I had a massive argument about how I was set up. You get a lot of hate. The media just want to crucify you all the time. I mean, it's not all bad, don't worry, guys. It's just no, yeah. This sounds really dreadful, but it's, <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> What's that? Pineapple ASMR? Mm. Mm. I have seen what ASMR means. What does it mean again? You ready? Yo, Wagwan, it's me dog, Mia. Me dog? <laughs> What's me dog? Me dog. Hey guys, and welcome to the very first episode of Chatting Balls with me, Mia Baker. And me, Ollie Robinson. Yeah, that's quite good again. Was it? Two times in a row. Mm, Smashing it. <laughs> <laughs> in today's episode, we're going to be talking about our lives and how we got here today because coming up with the very first episode idea was so difficult. Yeah, it took a long time. And you kept putting it on me, didn't you? You were like, what should we do first episode? And I'm thinking, I don't have a effing clue. <laughs> <laughs> However, it does make sense to kind of start at the beginning, give a little bit background, I guess, because maybe you've never shared your story no, online I... before ever. Not the full story, no. I think first episode's so hard because you obviously want to impress people and give sort of good content and have a few laughs and do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so you but, won't be getting any of that here today, I'm very sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this always happens. Um, <laughs> but yeah, to obviously make it about both of us as well, I feel like it's quite challenging because it's two different... It's very two very different stories. I think you your background compared to mine is like polar opposites. We've yeah, got we're the goody like two shoes cheese. over here. <laughs> yeah, I love it as well. I like being goody two shoes. And then whatever I was. Unintentional rebel. Unintentional, yeah. But rebel. Well, I just knew what I wanted to do from a very young age. There you go. So we're gonna be going into Ollie's story um in this very first episode. And then the next episode will uh, have a little look into mine. Me a bee. Yeah, I hate talking about mine. I feel like I've spoken about it so much. And I'm like, this is no longer interesting. But you find it interesting because you ask me different questions, to be fair. Yeah. And I think people do find it interesting. It's just when you talk about yourself all the time, like you do. <laughs> <laughs> and I find myself extremely boring. I'm like, oh my God, not again, Mia. Yeah. So we are currently at home. Mm, it is Finally. Finally. We've been away for a long time. Yeah, way too long. I've actually feel like I've become like I feel like I miss home more now I'm getting older than I ever did before. It's so different, isn't it? I think you when you're younger you just live how you want to live, you just mm. enjoy life and you get older and then you actually want to be at home and you don't want to go out. Miss I miss friends and family so much more. Mm. And like you don't have a choice necessarily but to travel because you have to do it with work. And so yeah, I think when we're younger you have the choice, don't you? Yeah. People go travelling, it's a choice. Whereas now, for us, this is, we have to go. Yeah, it's a job. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not all bad, don't worry, guys. It's just how, no, yeah. This sounds really dreadful, but it's, <laughs> it's not that bad. <laughs> so we've actually had, well, we're filming this just after Christmas. It's not quite New Year's yet, but you'll be listening to this podcast in January, yeah, middle of January. Time. Yeah. And so we've just had your 30th birthday. Yeah. Out in Dubai. In Dubai. My mother came out, which uh, was... Uh, Interesting, nice. wasn't it? It was nice. It was. The interesting thing was the hotel that I booked. Yeah, that was more interesting. Yeah. Ollie booked a party hotel for me, him and his mother. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... We're not really that party people, are we? No, I think my mum enjoyed it more than both yeah. of us. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I uh, made a bit of a mistake there, didn't I? Definitely. Yeah, but it it's just fine. just such good reviews online. Yeah, and you didn't realise they're all from people who are looking to, like... Party. Party and hook up with other people it's not really us <laughs> we're quite boring quite frankly yeah. um but i did get you i thought this was really cute of me i got you 30 birthday presents to represent every single year of your age 
And I wrote a little note which gave you a clue yeah. as to what each present was. You are actually very good at things like that. You do the, you've done the fairies at Christmas. You've done the notes for my birthday. Yeah, it's like a little talent. That you've I got. love being, I love being thoughtful, and I love like I love puzzles and quizzes and keeping people's mind engaged because I think yours. You, you love trying to keep mine engaged. <laughs> Mine switches on and off, like, I don't know what, doesn't it, though? Yeah. Sometimes I can be really on, other times I'm not even here. Yeah, <laughs> a lot of the time. Thank you. <laughs> Out of all of those 30 presents, though, and we're talking somewhere like literally a box of tissues, um, which was your favourite one, apart from the main one? I think the one I least expected was the paddle racket or paddle bat. Mm, because they're rackets, aren't they? Rackets, yeah. yeah. Because it's something that I really like and I really want to get more into. Mm-hmm. And then to have your own racket, it obviously makes you like want to play more. And then we went, to, we played a few times after, didn't we? Yeah. But that was quite a cool, cool gift. Yeah, you're actually quite good at paddle. Not too bad. Yeah, I'm rubbish. No, you're getting better, but a lot better. I'm like everything, I feel like I'm starting everything for the first time. I'm like Bambi. But you're not... My limbs are all over the shop. If I video myself, I'm like, why is one arm in that corner of the room with one leg in the other corner? Why do I look like that? I look so stupid. But also, <laughs> although you were good at netball when you, and a few other sports, you're not, your background's not that sporty. No. You just learn really fast. So when you do do something, you pick it up quickly. Mm, I have been doing some bowling lessons, guys. Some bowling lessons. In the bar. Watch this space. England cricket, here we come. With... With Ollie as my coach. Yeah, I'm not a great coach. No. Someone who's never bowled before. I think for someone that has a little understanding of cricket, I'm a really good coach. Yeah. You, yeah, but you need like a certain level of understanding. but Just what, 1% of <laughs> understanding. <laughs> but what he didn't realise is I knew nothing, which means everything from like, what did I not know that you thought grip. I would know? You thought uh, I would know how to grip the ball. I thought you'd know just like how to hold the ball, but I suppose... It, when Why you would th- I know how to hold the ball? But when you throw the ball... You don't throw, for people who can't see, I'm hot, like my hand's out like a claw. <laughs> you don't claw the ball and then throw it, do you? When I throw the ball, I don't throw a ball with three fingers, ever. Like my index, my middle and my thumb. I've never picked up a ball and thrown it like How that. How do you throw it? I put all my fingers on the ball and I throw it. That's where you're going wrong then. <laughs> what, you go around throwing it like that? Are you no, kidding but me? I'm sure people have it more like in these fingers because they're the powerful fingers, index and middle finger. Well, a netball's massive, so you're throwing it with all your fingers. Oh, yeah, well, that's different. Obviously. And then a little ball, I just chuck it. Actually, I'd usually throw it underarm because I feel more... So, basically, you have the tennis ball in your palm like you're going to shot put it, and that's how you throw. Shot put it? Shot put. You how do you do that? that no, I know what shot put is. Like that? But, yeah, maybe. I'd have to practice, but, See yeah. See what I'm doing. <laughs> I mean, anyway, as you can imagine, the first hour was... Difficult for you. Challenging for both of us. Fun for me. Was it? You enjoyed it? Yeah, I enjoyed it because everything I was learning knew, but I didn't realise I would copy everything. Everything, yeah. Everything you did. So you had to be so careful when you're teaching because I pick up everything. We should put that video on. Yeah, we're gonna put we're gonna put some of the videos because we filmed it all as well onto um, our Instagram Chatting Balls podcast because they are quite funny. Very funny. I look just stupid, and you just look we need to do in pain. You just look well, like I look stupid <laughs> as well to match them up a bit. Mm. I mean, maybe this video where I'm just filming <laughs> <laughs> this whole podcast. Yeah. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, and then we're also. Just had Christmas, so we've done pretty good in terms of seeing all family. Yeah, we've done about six, seven hundred miles, I reckon, this yeah. Christmas. And Over the space of a week, mm, which, I, not bad for us. Yeah, it's actually pretty good. I was going to say I picked up a new skill that I didn't realise I had, but that is building children's toys. Oh, my God. You actually love things like that. I love it. Yeah, I have so much fun building things. So next Christmas, me is getting Lego... <laughs> Yeah. A doll's house to the anything. I might get you like a 10,000 piece Lego something set. Okay. I would love it because I like to do it and then yeah. chat. And then once it's done, the little kids are like, oh my God, wow, it's amazing. And I'm like, see, I made this for you. Yeah. And we need a bigger puzzle. I think a thousand pieces. A jigsaw. It's too small. I did it mostly myself. Oh my God. <laughs> are you joking? <laughs> no. Mia is quite slow with the puzzles. Do like one or two pieces at a time. Whereas I do, I do like 
a set of 30 or 40 in like a couple of minutes and then <laughs> have, a, have a break for a few hours, maybe a day, and then come back to it. And it's like basically finished. It wasn't. <laughs> Without me. You I would, just don't know where I'd it be. It still wouldn't be finished. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, but I think we should try and get a bigger one because mm. we got back on the 23rd, didn't we, in the evening, started at Christmas Eve, finished at Christmas Day. Yeah. That's quite quick. Yeah. So that's the, yeah. Any bigger, harder puzzles, guys? Let us know. <laughs> yeah. I, and I've been doing Rubik's Cube. I've just been everything to engage my mind at the moment. I don't know what's... Clever little stick, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> and then in January, we're going to India. Yeah. Not long. So I'm going to Abu Dhabi on the 11th for a training camp uh, with England. And then India is 21st of January out there for like seven weeks. Um... We've got five test matches, which is five games for people that don't know cricket. Um, so, yeah, it'll be an interesting tour. Yeah, mm. you've not played cricket in ages. No. I've been training hard, so I'm quite excited to sort of put that to, to work. Um, I'm looking forward to watch you. Mm. I'm a bit scared to go to India, to be honest, because it's all a bit of an unknown for me. It, yeah, I mean, I haven't been when it's not been COVID. Mm. So last time I went, we were there for eight weeks again, and... We didn't leave the hotel. It was honestly the, probably the worst trip I've been on. Oh, worst? Yeah. Why? We were stuck in this hotel, which was probably sort of travel lodge standard mm-hmm. for eight weeks. Couldn't yeah. leave. I mean, the only saving grace was the table tennis table. We absolutely annihilated it. <laughs> we were on it every day. <laughs> Just playing table tennis. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be tough. But... We'll have a golf sim this time. We'll be allowed out for dinner. Yeah, so if you guys didn't know, because I did not know this, but um, the cricket team fly around with an actual golf simulator. I was like, to be to be fair, I was thinking, oh, you want me to travel with you, but I'm like, how am I going to do my golf videos, etc., whilst on the road in countries I know nothing about? Firstly, India does have golf courses. I don't know how big it is out there compared to other countries. It's a little bit harder to find them, but I found a couple. And I say this, um, Ari, the places that we're going, because they're a little bit niche. I'm sure in the yeah. bigger cities, there'll be plenty of golf courses, but we are going to some slightly niche places. Places but, I've never heard of. Mm. And then Ollie was like, oh, by the way, we travel with a golf simulator. I'm like, sorry, what? He's like, yeah, we just set it up in a business center. I'm thinking... No, no, we, so normally, you know, like a hotel has... A business room, sorry. A business sorry. room, yeah. Sorry. Or, a business centre. We just hire out our own business centre, hundred thousand square foot. No, no, that's what they call it. And we just put it. our little <laughs> golf stream letter right in the middle, so no one else can use it. And that's what the England cricket team do. You know what I meant. Some people call their business rooms business centres. Yeah, a meeting room, whatever. So we put it in there. Yeah. And we turn it into like our team room. So we'll have maybe a sofa or two in there. We will have the golf sim over there. After the day's play, we'll have the physios and treatment room, a uh, treatment like section in the, on the corner, so then everyone can sort of be together and order food or. And there'll just be me on the golf sim when you're doing you'll your be little playing meetings. With everyone else, because everyone plays. <laughs> yeah, like, true. The whole team. I mean, people that know England cricket will know that it's we love golf, but mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, everyone. You all play golf. Yeah, I had the privilege of playing golf with you guys, actually. Yeah, so we, we we just got back from, um, did we say that? Where did we say? Dubai, we got back from Dubai. So after my 30th, we stayed out for a little bit longer. Um, so we were in Dubai, Abu Dhabi for... The reason we were out there, what he's trying to say is the reason we were out there was because I had to go to the DP World Tour Championship event for golf work and Ollie had to go out to Abu Dhabi for cricket training with all of the cricket lot. The cricket lot. The cricket lot. <laughs> England cricket team. <laughs> the national team. <laughs> Doing some cricketing. Um, so that's why we were out there in the first instance. And whilst we were out there, I got asked if I would play golf with them. Mm-hmm. I Which... thought that was very kind of them because I was the only girl and I couldn't speak. Lost my voice. Yeah, you had laryn- we think you had laryngitis or something, didn't we? But I think Mia could be the first girlfriend to have been invited to play golf with the lads, potentially. Yeah, but to be fair, do you know what I was thinking as well? Because there's a golf sim, and if we can't necessarily go and watch your games, I was thinking, hmm, maybe some of the girlfriends or wives in India would want to learn golf. It just depends how many go, doesn't it? It's such a niche trip. I don't know how many will go. Okay, just me on my own then. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> but 
But I was thinking, could start getting more people into the game. Let her be on your Instagram. You'd be doing yeah. lessons in the day when the lads are playing cricket. I'm not sure the lads will appreciate me for doing that. Though. They'll be like, oh my God, this was my time to get away from my missus. No, because <laughs> you, when we were playing, yeah. you and the girls won't come watch. You'll be doing the lessons <laughs> in the sim. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> I actually can imagine. Yeah, I can too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, in this episode, we're just going to kind of touch on your story and how you started even cricket full stop because you started when you were very, very, very young, mm. didn't you? I mean, I don't remember it, but I was told that I started, I was started at two. Um, two? Yeah, two. I mean, my Imag- daughter's three. Yeah. I'm like, I can't imagine her starting last year. No, it's like the attention span, keeping the attention span of a small child at the age of two on such a slow sport is yeah. really quite impressive. I think, though, because like I, I see this with a lot of boys, they just want to hit things. Yeah. And I would have just been hitting that ball as hard as I could, like and just thrashing have, it. Did you have someone throwing at you? Yeah, I think, I mean, I remember all... Like all through my childhood, every day I'd be like, Mum, can you bowl at me? Dad, can you bowl at me? Granddad, Nanny, can you bowl at me? Inside, outside? Anywhere. Everywhere. The kitchen was my favourite spot because it was a bit long, it was the longest room. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, oh, you've just been to Dad's, haven't you? Yeah. And the kitchen's obviously a bit longer. I'd stand like the other end where the, that table would never used to be there. So it just used to be open back to front. And I'd hit it, and Mum would bowl it, or Dad would bowl it. And then I'd be like, put some spin in it, try and get me out. How did you even know about that? I put some spin on oh, it. Well, we if I was two, I wouldn't even know no, how to say spin. this wasn't when we were two. Oh. This is a bit later on. We didn't, I don't think we moved I was going to say, so. you're very intelligent for a two-year-old. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was two, it was more at my grandparents' house. I remember it a bit like two, three, four in the garden with the uh, blue quick cricket bats, if anyone has seen those, orange wind balls, like the soft plasticky balls. Um... But my granddad, my dad, just loved cricket. Even my uncle played cricket. Um, that whole side of that family. Why do they like cricket so much? My granddad was really good, mm-hmm. so he was a wicketkeeper batter. I think if this, like, I think if he had fun- enough funding or his parents that could have, he could have played county cricket. Obviously, back then, it wasn't. It's cricket quite quick. It it's cricket. Cricket. <laughs> quite quite expensive. The equipment is, but also back then you, it's only probably, I don't know how long exactly people would know better, but last 20 or 30 years, it's only been, it's, it's only sort of, then can it be a proper job? Like before um, that, people had to work still and play professional cricket. Worldwide, or you mean in England? County cricket. So oh. like Australia have state cricket, we have county cricket. They would work and... But England cricket still existed, like country cricket. Country cricket still existed. But even then, some would work in the winter. It'd be like six-month contracts and then you'd work in the winter or... Really? Yeah, like plum, like people would go and do plumbing or... That's insane because what number of sport in the world is cricket? It's really high. It's high, yeah. I was super surprised by how high it was because I was like, cricket? Mm. But that's because of India, right? India, Australia. I mean, England as well. But... Yeah, probably last 30, 40 years maybe it's actually been a proper job and wow. people can make a proper living out of it. That's insane. And so, okay, you're two years old, you've learnt to play cricket. What happened next? Yeah, so then Dad was the coach, I think, of the district side. He took he sort of took over that alongside running his um, business and took over the district team, Thunit Under 10s, I think it was Thunit Under 10s or Thunit Under 9s, one of them, um, and the, the club side Margate, which is mm-hmm. where I played all my junior cricket. Um, and I basically got picked, but I think because there wasn't enough numbers to fill the main 11 and at the district team, and Dad was like, yeah, come on, come play. You can bat 11, you probably won't bowl, but you can make up the numbers. Um, How old are you? Six, I think, or five, five six. I showed you the ball, didn't I? How old is everyone? Nine, ten. Nine. So you're younger by a significant amount. Yeah, I was tiny as well, like, <laughs> compared to the rest Which of Which is them. mad, because you're, like, massive now. Yeah, huge. Huge. It's, like, over six foot. Six foot six. Wow. That's really tall. Mm. <laughs> um, it's so weird, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, he's like, come play. And anyway, we play the game. We got, I think, 80-odd. 
um, they were chasing. I think I can't remember who were playing what district it was, but they were chasing and they were coasting. They were going to win easy. They were seventy five for five, needing eighty five or something like that. So then, captain was like, "Come on, come have a bowl. Like it's your first game. Chuck me the ball just by chance because we were going to lose." Um, and then first ball I got wicket. I was like, "Okay." Like this, this is your first time playing with a hard ball. Yeah, and it was a bit surreal because. Can you no, remember it? Right? Can you actually remember it? I, I can actually remember the pitch, the scoreboard on the right. Like I can see it in my head. Yeah. Um, I bowled from this end. I mean, I don't know what end that was. But <laughs> I can see it. Yeah. And first um, wicket, first ball I bowled in hardball cricket, I got wicket. And I think everyone was a bit like, "Oh wow." That's like lucky or fluke, yeah. or like beginner's luck. Or yeah, that. yeah, yeah. And then second ball, got a wicket. The second one was a bit luckier. It was like a rubbish ball got caught mid wicket or something like that. Mid wicket's like over to the left for people that don't know cricket. Yeah, I didn't know what. Yeah, I thought mid wicket would be like in the middle. Kind of, of the wicket. Mid wicket to the left. Yeah. Hmm. And then cover is the opposite side on the right. We what? haven't done fielding, would... we haven't done fielding positions yet, have we? No, but why would mid be left, not middle, and why would cover be right? Why would it not be? Honestly, right? don't know the answers, but your book that you got for Christmas will give you the answers. <laughs> Ollie's won't dad it? bought me a book, cricket for dummies. <laughs> me, uh, dad texted me saying, "What should I get me for Christmas?" The first thing I said was, "Get her a book, cricket for dummies." <laughs> I'm probably going to read it. You, know? you will. You like reading. It teaches me how to be a cricket fan as well. It's like how to tour with the cricket team. How to tour. Yeah, honestly, it says how to buy tickets to watch a cricket game, how to follow the team. You'll be more knowledgeable than me. Yeah. You'll be teaching me things. I'll be like, right, Oliver, to get uh, the tickets to Lords this year, we'll need to make sure we enter the... God, you sound like your dad then. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, dad. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so second ball got a wicket as well. And then a few overs went by. Um, they didn't get many runs because at age group cricket, the lower... Or the batters can't bat. Like you have five or six kids that can bat, and then it's just sort of people to fill the numbers or bowlers. Yeah. Um, so I came back about three or four overs later, and they needed five to win, I think, or six to, six to win. And my figures were like four overs, two for five, or something like that. Two wickets, five runs. Um, and then the next three balls, I proceeded to get wickets. And got a hat trick to win the game. And the scenes at this kids under tens game were like winning the FA Cup, winning the Masters. <laughs> they were like Go huge, wild. wild, yeah, wild. Like parents were running on the field, kids were running around like screaming. Did you even know? Were you a bit like, what have I just done? Or what's happened? Like, well, I loved cricket like yeah. from a young age and knew that we when we needed the last wicket. I was like, oh my god, we could actually win this. And then when it happened, well, I bowled the ball and the whole team were like 10 yards away from the bat. So really? every fielder were really close. Yeah. Um, and it, it bowled him, hit the wooden stumps. He missed it. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, yeah. He were missed it. All of your last three, though, type? I think one was caught and two were bowled. Um, and I finished with figures of five overs, five wickets for five runs. Um, yeah, it was just absolute carnage. Like... I still remember the kids just running all over the place and I was one of them obviously like going crazy. And not then, even sure what had happened, I imagine. Not really. And dad was, I think dad was maybe on the side and he was so calm. He was like not, he didn't come on the field. He just, really? How Because he was coach. Oh. And he was like, obviously like, yes, we've won. But everyone else was going mad. And I remember dad just walking on slowly. He was like, well done. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you got? Yeah, thanks dad. <laughs> Um, that's funny yeah and then but he's like we're similar and we're not over emotional are we yeah you are as in you can't you don't maybe put it outside of your body but you'll be like I'm so happy I'm really excited and I'm buzzing or I'm really sad and it sounds exactly (laughs) the same (laughs) yeah but that was my first ever hardball game, which was pretty crazy. And then the next few days, I had the local newspapers, all all of the, like... Like knocking on your door? Knocking on Dad's door, yeah. Can we get photos? What, just randomly? You'd be like, who's that? No, I think it was... Plant. 
I think they'd obviously asked to come and do it, uh-huh. but I don't remember that. I was five, six. Yeah. I had to hold these three cricket balls, which were like, my hands were tiny. I was five or six. <laughs> and these cricket balls are massive. And the bloke's like, can you hold three at the same time? And I'm like, I try. And they're falling on the floor. And <laughs> he's like, yeah, that would do. And he's like, smile. And I've got, I think I've had two teeth that have fallen out. Like my baby teeth have fallen out. Yeah, it's a, uh, look, it look great. <laughs> I'll, I'll find the picture and we'll put it on the video. Yeah, the I'd video. like to see the picture. That's yeah. so weird. Like funny, good, impressive, but also like pretty crazy story crazy for like a six-year-old yeah and then from that day on i was just addicted to cricket addicted to like winning taking a wicket that feeling Mm. because you probably had the biggest high there and you'll be chasing that high exactly yeah ever yeah like even i mean there's obviously been more now but whenever you get a wicket it's just such a good feeling or i hit a six Mm. and the whole ground the bow like your teammates on the balcony are clapping if you're batting or your teammates go crazy with you yeah. when you're bowling, taking a wicket. It's quite a... I, I want you to work on your wicket face. My celebrations. Yeah, because he looks like a psychopath. Yeah, I can't help that. It's... Like your eyes pop out and they bulge in your face and even your hair like stands up like spikes because you get so much electric energy through your head. Yeah, can't head. really control that. It's like a inner... I don't know, you know what it's called? You know some of these athletes, they have like... They look gorgeous when they win. They just look cool. Do they? I don't know. But <laughs> you look like you're going to kill someone. Oh, thanks. That <laughs> means a lot. Well, yeah, those outer body experiences. Yeah. That's what it is. An outer body experience. I can't control it. But the thing is, it's such a good feeling. You're not just going to be like, yay, and like do a perfect smile. Um, you could try. I'm going to get a wicket. I'm going to get Virat Kohli out and then just be like, thanks, guys. S- smile. <laughs> like, that's just not going to happen. Okay. But anyway, <laughs> that's what got me addicted to cricket, definitely, that first mm. game. And then since then, I've never really looked back. But yeah. I went through the county system, age groups, went, um, played a few years above, I think, till I was 17, 18, and then played second team cricket for Kent. Um, and just always played sort of above my age group and excelled in whatever team I was playing for. Um, Do you think that was just because you started so much younger? So you had more experience? Probably. And I like, trained. could anyone be like that? Maybe. I think I, tra- I, like, I played it a lot, though. When I wasn't playing a game, I was training or hitting mm. balls or bowling at Dad. or Like, in Dad's garden, we used to cut a cricket pitch every summer. Really? Yeah, I'd get, he, Dad bought a roller for me. You know the heavy rollers? He bought a roller for me, and I used to walk up and down to make sure it was a bit harder, a bit flatter. So you could change it? Yeah, because you have to roll the wicket to make sure it's hard. Because obviously, if you just cut it, mm. like the grass outside, if you just cut it, it would just be soft. Yeah. The ball would just sit in like a green, I suppose. Mm. And then you roll it, it gets harder and firmer. And we had a fence behind it so I could bowl it like however I wanted. And if someone missed it, it just hit the fence. Mm. It made this massive crash. <laughs> I remember as I got older, the fence got more and more holes in it. And then I think Dad must have put a net behind it or something. I can't remember. Wow, that's mad. But just, I think... If that's you... it though. It's all of that extra time and hard work that's gone in that you didn't even notice because you enjoyed it so much Mm. that probably made a massive difference i think the team that i was in from a young age the club team margate that margate had that my dad run the junior side was what made me really enjoy cricket because Mm. it was the same sort of 12 lads every week every weekend going and playing and we got to like the final of the National Cup. We were almost the best side in the country, clubs, club team. Um, and we used to win and go back to dad's or go to someone else's, have like a little tea party, <laughs> whatever you want to call them. Um, and it was fun, like cool yeah. team environment. I think that's what, that's why I love this sport and other sports, just that team um, sort of bonding and the morale that you get when you do well. Yeah. It's nice. I it's think. like individual because you can work on it on your own, but then when it all comes together, you're working together. Uh, yeah, I like the fact that I can win a game of cricket for the team, like mm. for the lads. Mm. I think like now, obviously playing for England, Baz, Brendan McCullum, the head coach, he always says when the game's going flat, be the one to change the game like you if you can be that person you'll go a long way to helping this team win the game and it's 
that feeling of being able to do it yourself, which is a great feeling, but also doing it for the other 10 lads yeah. that you're playing with um, and the excitement and sort of like mad few minutes you get when you get a wicket, you're all going mm-hmm. crazy. And you, you look like we've, we've played in front of 100,000 people. Yeah. You get a wicket, you, you don't know anyone's there. It's just those 11 people in the middle yeah. going crazy and it's such a cool feeling. And I think that's why like, I love cricket and I've always loved this, this sport. Yeah, it was pretty cool. And then, so obviously, as a kid, you played cricket all the time and went to school. You was a bit of a rebel. So basically, <laughs> really enjoyed school until I was nine or ten. I was at a primary, my local primary school. Um, and then my dad, well, my parents, my mum and dad, knew that I was getting quite good at cricket. Mm-hmm. Um, and they thought that I'd have more opportunity at cricket and other sports if I went to a private school. Unfortun- I was obviously fortunate enough to to go to Wellesley House in, in Kent, um, a really good prep school. The sport was really good. They had, they'd had England players, England cricket players, um, go there before me. Is that why you got put in it? It was a local school as well. Oh, right. So it was only sort of 25 minutes from us. Um, so I went there for three years, and... The first year, I hated it because I was just from a normal background, whereas these kids were from sort of, what would you call it, higher class backgrounds. Yeah. Yeah. And I got bullied, basically, for the first year for being, well, not the first year, the first two terms for being sort of the chav, almost. (laughs) Really? Yeah. At lunch, I'd be like, oh, can you pass the gravy, please? And they'd be like, oh, you want the fat and gravy, do you? Like, <laughs> mimicking me like this. And I'd be like, and I was 10. Yeah. And there are these posh um, pupils that took the piss. And then the summer, the third term, yeah. cricket came around. Oh. And I obviously dominated school cricket. And They probably didn't know you were good at cricket then. I was, like, oh, I was still good at other sports, but not like you know the stand up yeah the stand up and then the summer came around cricket came around and it was like just fitted into school Mm. so much better that's sport for you i think every kid should do sport because it makes a huge difference like making friends yeah and after that i loved that school i was there till i was 13 and just really enjoyed everything like got on got made friends that i still speak to now i don't really see them obviously because we're aware a lot but i still yeah. keep in touch through social media um and yeah that was really enjoyable so a few years playing rugby playing football cricket playing all those sports mm. with people that i got on with um and then i went to king's canterbury and got a gower scholarship so da- david gower who's that he's um, i just nodded i was like david gower <laughs> <laughs> he played for england cricket as well he was oh. one of England's best batters, basically. David Gower. David He Gower. might be in my cricket for dummies. Mm, maybe. Have you seen it, have you? No, but oh. it might be. He has everything to... in that book. It's pretty good. Yeah, he went to King's Canterbury, and I got, so I got his scholarship there, basically. Um, but school just wasn't for me by that point. I was only 13, but I just knew that I wanted to play cricket. And I felt like any time I wasn't training, it was wasted, because that's what I wanted to do, and that was, that was what I was going to be. Mm. The only time I went to school with excitement was for sport yeah. or for maths or PE or biology, like the, the few lessons I did like. Um, I think a lot of kids are like that, though. Don't really like school, only like certain subjects. Mm, yeah, true. I mean, we saw you. Except you actually reacted to it. <laughs> yeah. don't know why that was. I think I've always been a bit sort of... By reacted, we mean didn't turn up. Mm, I've always <laughs> been a bit like that. don't know what... What? What do you mean? Well, if someone says something that, that I don't agree with, I'll just be like, no. Or, like, someone wants me to go to this lesson, and I'm like, it's not going to benefit me, I'm not going. Like, I've always, I'm all, I don't know what that is, though. Yeah, but do you see it from their point of view, like, why they wanted you to go to the lesson? Yeah, but they didn't see what I had. They never watched me play cricket. They never watched me play sport. Mm. So then they're just, like, they're just trying to be a teacher, I suppose, aren't they? Yeah. Do their job. Um. But, yeah, and King's was a bit more free-flowing. You could sort of do what you want. You would treat it as an adult. Um, If you didn't want to go to a lesson, they wouldn't really make you. Yeah. There was only one time, which was French. (laughs) 
I think I was 15. It might have been like GCSE year. <gasps> Why does everyone hate, hate French I class? I didn't actually mind French, but it was the last lesson of the day, maybe. Yeah. And I had training after, and I thought, if I can get to training half hour, hour early, I can hit some balls on the bowling machine, or I can do a bit of extra practice. I was like, right, so I'm, I'm going to go go train and not go to French. I already had it in my head before the lesson yeah. started. Um, and the lesson before was like biology or something. And the biology lab or the science lab was behind the languages place. So you had to walk past languages or French, my French class, to get back to my house to get changed and go play cricket. Um, and on that day, the French teacher was standing outside the classroom. What? Just for you? Or just no, for, for everyone. Coincidence. Yeah, I think because mm. I think it was summer. I can't remember now. And it was obviously nice. And she was just standing outside. And I was like, oh, no, she's going to see me. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, she's going to catch me. I'm going to have to go to French, aren't I? And I'm like, for God's sake. <laughs> and um, I can't remember what she said. She said something like, oh, coming in today or something like this. And I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> she's like, what? She's like, you got French. I was like, oh, no, I can't. I've got cricket. She's like, you don't, you have cricket at half four and it's half three. I was like, how do you know that? She's like, I know all this. I, think, <laughs> I can't remember if like my parents must have given them my schedule by this point because I kept yeah. missing lessons for cricket or whatever it was. And I was like, no, I can't, need to go. So then I probably get 10 yards on her, 15 yards on her walking away as she's talking. Um, well, she, like she's finished speaking, I'm still walking past and I'm probably like 10, 15 yards away and she's like, are you not coming in? I'm like, no, I'm going to cricket. <laughs> so then I'm walking, I get a bit faster and then I can hear like someone running and I turn around and she's running after me. So I start running away from her. <laughs> and it's like, it's like a, it's like a sketch from some comic, uh, comedy. And it's like, she's not, she wasn't the youngest or the smallest lady that you've ever seen. And like, after sort of a minute of running, she'd stopped. She's knackered. Like, yeah, she's, she's knackered. Thinking, oh my God, I can't be doing this. <laughs> and I've got away from her. So I go to my house. My house master, Mr. Fox, who was a legend, it was like, well, uh, I think he said, oh, I've just had a call. Like, it took me probably another five minutes to get to my house. Yeah. Uh, Mitchinson's my house at King's. And he was, I've just had a call from a French teacher. Why are you not going? And I was like, oh, I'm going to go cricket training. He was like, all right then. <laughs> <laughs> he loved cricket like more than anyone in the whole school. Oh, really? Yeah. Loved cricket. He was like, all right then, good dad. I was like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. Got my bag, off I went. But yeah, that was, that was quite funny, actually. I remember all the kids were laughing and the next day I come back into school and they're like, what happened? What happened? Did you get detention? I said, nothing. I haven't heard from anyone. And they were like, what? And it was like... How come we got away with it? It got to that point at school where people just accepted it. And what could you used to skive so much? Maybe. I think my GCSE year was like 34% attendance, which <laughs> pretty, so bad. pretty poor. I think I cried the first time I had to miss school because I was ill. You cried? I think so. <laughs> cried? Did you I miss school? Because I didn't get 100% attendance. Oh, my God. I know. I mean... It's embarrassing, actually. If you're a child listening to this or a kid, probably be like me and not like me, but... <laughs> Yeah, but look at you. You're playing for England. I'm not. Mm, but I know what I wanted. I knew what I wanted to do. And I knew that if I could apply myself enough and more than other people, I would get there. And I think that's obviously mm -hmm. a lesson for most people. If you, want, if you really want something, you can do it. You just have to apply yourself more than anyone else. You have to train harder than anyone else. And that's how yeah. you get to the top. Did you ever have days, though, where you were just like, oh, I kind of can't be asked? Yeah, as I got older, definitely sort of found going out and found alcohol <laughs> and just became a really rebellious teenager. Like, I think I was in the Kent Academy till 16. Kent didn't offer me a professional contract. Why? Um, the coach, me and the coach just didn't get on, really. Oh. And he decided who got sort of graduated from the academy. Um they were like, yeah, there's no professional contract for you here, even though I was leading run scorer, leading wicket taker. Really? Yeah. Is it like that in cricket? Whereby you just, if you get on with people, you'll get in? And if you Not don't... really. I think we just had a really bad relationship where we knew we didn't like each other. He, I knew that he set the sort of laws almost. Um, I remember going to see the director of cricket at Kent and being like, why well, have I not got a contract? And 
that this person has or whatever. And they were like, mm. oh, we've got no budget for you this year. Like just a lame excuse, which yeah. a lot of counties still do now. But um, half the time people... Were you gutted or not too gutted? Yeah, I was because I really wanted to play for Kent. It was my home county. Mm. Um, really wanted to sort of... like I had dreams of playing for Kent my whole career, winning trophies there, playing for England. Um, and yeah, that sort of got pushed aside very quickly. Um, and I had to go out into sort of the real world, if you like, because mm -hmm. when you at a county and you get put on the academy, like you get really well looked after, you get a bit of funding, you get everything on a plate almost. And then when you don't get a professional contract, that quickly becomes like that go, that everything goes and you're just left on your own. Mm. And then I remember I said to my dad, I was like, okay, I'm going to have like, I think I was 17 at this point. Cause I, my birthday is December the 1st. So obviously you have, I have the cricket summer and then turn 17 or 18, December the 1st. And I was like, I'm going to have a couple of months off and sort of enjoy some time with my friends and, what not um and i think my when i turned 17 i got my mate's brother's id yeah i was gonna say i'm pretty sure you can't drink at 17 yeah so got fake id <laughs> and was going to the local clubs two or three times a week on about 10 or 20 quid <laughs> and having the best time all through the winter um what mama, were you doing at this point because you didn't have school right no so what i tried doing the day i tried Sixth form for six weeks, got bullied really badly. Why? Can't remember why. I think I can't remember what happened. Something must have happened anyway. And it was like I walked in one morning to the school. There's a poster of my face on the wall, and it was mm. like, "If you're friends with this guy, like beware" or something like that. And it was my face, <laughs> and I was like, "What did you do?" I can't remember. Did you do something to? I must have, yeah. Um, <laughs> and it was like Jesus. And then a few a few people were like, oh, don't worry about it, ignore it. Like, it's just bullies being, like, idiots or whatever. Um, but, yeah, that lasted six weeks. And then I was like, ah, it's not for me, this. It's rubbish. Like, yeah. And then I tried college for three days. And it only lasted three days because there was a really good-looking female <laughs> in my class. And I was like, I think after one day, I was like, I'm not enjoying this. Two days, I was like, how much longer can I do it? And yeah. I was like, right, I'll give it one more day. And I think I looked at her for the whole hour of the lesson. And I was like, no, nah, that's it. That's, that's me done. <laughs> Even she couldn't keep you. <laughs> yeah. And that, that was it. And then, so that would, would have been September because of that like, term starts in September. Yeah. So then I think I, I got to half term of the sixth form. Then after half term, went to college. Um, and then, yeah, I think I went rebellious stage after that and was going out a lot. Mum and dad had split by then. Um, I think two years before. So mum lived in Canterbury, which when she moved there and I was six, six, 15, 16, she was like, oh, this is a great location. Mm. Right? It's five minutes from the town. We can walk, get coffee, go shopping. When I was 17, 18, it was five minutes from the clubs. I could walk to the clubs. <laughs> I could walk to the pubs. I was like, this is unbelievable, mum. <laughs> and I think she regrets moving there now, but it was perfect. <laughs> um, this is unbelievable, mum. Yeah, like, this is a right spot. <laughs> That's when you're being like a geezer. Yeah. <laughs> And then I used to have my mates over after the night, just like four of us in the bed or two of us in the bed, two of us in the floor, just... What, girls and boys? Mostly boys. Mostly boys? The lads, just like proper pissed up, you know, like <laughs> been out in the club and... Oh my God, your poor mother. Yeah. And then there was, there was actually one time where mum and her other half Paul went to... I don't know where they went. They might have gone away on holiday and had a party, nice party like big party I think 20 or 30 people came around and um they got back and like they had no idea I'd clean up everything me and a couple other lads clean up every single inch of the house apart from this one welly <laughs> oh god <laughs> they, they had sick in it this one welly oh in god. behind the door in the downstairs toilet and I remember I left in the morning they they got back the night before I left in the morning to go do whatever I was doing and um I got a call from my mum. She was like, get home now. I was like, and my heart sunk. I was like, oh no. I was like, <laughs> what's happened? I was like, what's she found? I was thinking, like, this, I, God, I didn't even know what to think. Yeah. I was like, what have I done? And then 
a walk in and they're both like I don't think I think Paul had left. I think Paul was so angry he had to leave. Oh really? He had to leave the house, yeah. <laughs> and mum was standing there with this welly. <laughs> and it no word of a lie, it was a full length welly. Yeah. Like, big one. It had piss it had we to about inch of the top. Oh my god. So whoever had done it really needed the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> And I, that's the only thing I missed. She was like, who's done this? I was like, uh, honestly, I don't know. Like, <laughs> honestly, don't know. I've never seen it before. I was like panicking. I was like, I've never seen it. I don't know what's happened. She was like, what have you done? I was like, nothing. And then she'd obviously been to the bins. Oh. She was like, I've seen there's 50 beer bottles in the bin. If you had round. I was like, no, you weren't. Like, a few lads came around. That was it. And then... Um, I, don't, I can't remember I think like my cousin must have come or yeah. whatever and mum had found out from my auntie that they'd been around it was like a little party or a little gathering she was like you've had a party and she was fuming she was fuming you're not know. that good at lying though you're shifty shifty yeah you're quite like fidgety you're like oh <laughs> <laughs> anyway yeah that happened and it was like all hell broke loose and I was like oh my god I'm really sorry and then that was the start of sort of me going out and being really rebellious. And I used to come in at three o'clock in the morning and then go back out at four o'clock in the morning to go to someone else's house. And mum and Paul would be awake because their bedroom was like on the yeah. driveway. And I did that for a few months and then... What were you doing? I don't understand what you were doing in the day though. You'd go out in the night. Would you just sleep all day? Sleep till midday, wake up. Like, go for a run, go to the gym. That's it. Maybe go work for dad. But with no, like, purpose. Um, Like, I don't understand how you can do that and then not feel a bit, like, lost or at a loose end or a bit like, what am I doing with myself? Mm, It was only for probably six weeks because Mm. half term, then Christmas, and then it stopped. And I remember having a conversation with my dad in January and it was like, right, I want to get back to cricket. Like, this is what I want to do. I want to play cricket. I've had yeah. some fun. Um, and then we started training again. We st- we started renting out the local indoor school, going there a few days a week. I um, started training really hard, sort of overtraining, like facing really fast bowling on the bowling machine and bowling loads of overs and just sort of trying to out-train people, I suppose. They were already pros and mm. get as good as I could for trials in March, April. And then I tried... In March, April came around... Um, and Essex and Sussex are the two. Oh, I played for Yorkshire before this. So mm. then I trialed at Warwickshire, Hampshire, and Yorkshire. And I think when I trialed for Warwickshire first time, I got runs and wickets against Yorkshire. And then mm. they were like, come trial for us. I trialed for them, did well, got signed. And then I had 18 months playing for them. I like, really enjoyed the first sort of six months because I was a professional cricketer and that's all I ever wanted to do. And then I think six months went by. My girlfriend was in Surrey. My family were in Kent and life sort of caught up with me a little bit or sort of realised that this actually could be me for 20 years. I could be here four hours away from everyone for 20 Mm. years. And the realisation of that caught up with me and I think... Because Ollie's actually like one of the most family oriented people I've ever met. You message your mum and dad every single day. And I swear, you're always on FaceTime to your mum. Like, you're so close. It's wild. I think being an only child is... Yeah. I've only ever had really them two. And my nan. Um, And obviously, if if Sienna had a phone, I'd probably face text or FaceTime her. Sienna, your daughter. I'd face text, FaceTime or text her every day. Yeah. Um... She's a bit young for a phone. <laughs> a little but, bit. Yeah. Three years old. Three years old. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that was the realisation. And I started driving back to Kent every weekend and just to sorry to my girlfriend. And I was trying to lead two lives at this point. And it's hard. It just became too much. Yeah. yeah. It just didn't really work out. Um, so I got a few verbal warnings and then a written warning and the last straw was me breaking like a club rule which was no phones 
Oh, you had to hand your phone in, sorry, mm. when you had a game. And I took two phones. I took my old phone and my new phone. Gave my old phone in. Um, new phone was in my, the bottom of my bag. And I'd like gone, been to the toilet for five minutes to use it, checked it. And then came back in to the changing room, put it, slipped it back in my bag. Went back outside to watch the lads because we were batting. Um, I think half hour went by and then got up, went back into the changing room. My phone was sitting like perfect on top of my bag, like someone had obviously placed mm-hmm. it there. Um, and the coach, funnily enough, was like two yards behind me. I like, walked in exactly the same time and I was like, didn't really think anything of it. Mm. Once I got in the changing room, saw my phone in my bag, panicked, and, like grabbed it, tried to cover it up. He was like, what was that? I was like, uh, iPad? He's like, <laughs> like phone. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, it was, but... I, hadn't, I was like, oh, I haven't had it out. It was right at the bottom of my bag and like, it must have slipped out or whatever. And that was like the final straw, really. They told the chief exec, DOC, and that was my final warning, I think, and then got sacked like next morning and had a massive argument about how I was set up. And like, there was loads of little things that happened before that. I just wasn't really enjoying the normal side of... That. Yeah. Like I was really enjoying the cricket. The cricket was good. Like Yorkshire is a great county for cricket. It's yeah. one of the biggest in England. But away from cricket, I was hating it. And I think to be really good at something, you have to enjoy where you are. Or I think you have to like be happy away from it and during to really be successful. I think you can block it out for a certain amount of time um and just focus on obviously what you're working on but i think eventually it catches up with you you see yeah. it with footballers rugby players like they go away for a few years and play at different places but eventually they'll come home and yeah they'll get better or mm. not, not get better they'll perform better because they're like, it's hard you do need a support network around exactly, you yeah and i think maybe if my like my girlfriend at the time lived in yorkshire it might have been different, it might have been easier. Yeah, like you've you had see, someone there. Yeah, yeah, and you can see that potentially you could be there with someone for a long time, but it just wasn't the case and it didn't really work out. So then... How did you feel when you got sacked? Relieved. It was like the happiest time. Really? Yeah. It was so weird because you work so hard to get to, obviously, this place where you want to be, professional cricketer. And what you think is your dream. Yeah, like... Every day I was, before I got signed, I was like, I want to be a professional cricketer. I want to play for England. How am I going to do that? And then I got signed and I was over the moon, like so happy for a few months. And then reality hit, like I said, and the feeling of getting sacked was actually just as high as getting signed. (laughs) That's so mental. Crazy. That is actually really weird. Because I knew I could go home. I knew I could see my friends, see my family. Hadn't seen them for probably... 12 to 18 months I'd seen them on the odd occasion Mm. um like my mate would my mates would drive up to to see me or I'd drive down but never really like fulfilled me like Mm. like I thought it it would or should um and you know there's options of other counties as well so you know it's not the be all and end all you've got 18 other counties and although getting sacked probably isn't the right way to do it (laughs) probably not (laughs) my life in a nutshell (laughs) yeah (laughs) um it was how it happened and I think it actually made me probably hungrier in the long run and better in the long run. Um, you have to sort of become a bit more resilient when you get sat because some counties, some people don't want to touch you. Yeah. They're like, he's a bad egg. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you have to work harder and you have to prove more people wrong, which is sort of what I like doing anyway sometimes. I like proving Is that why people... you do it? No, it wasn't. No, it's not why I do it. But if someone doubts me, I'm like, I'll show you like I'll show yeah. you I can do it or whatever um so yeah I got sacked and then went to Hampshire for a trial and I think third over and I got injured and was out for the rest of the winter and that was 2013 I think um Jesus <laughs> I'm like stressed if I was living your life I'd be the most stressed person ever <laughs> but uh, I've said to you haven't I, a few times I never look back yeah I'm never like Oh, you accept I never, it, deal with it and move yeah, on. Yeah, I never dwell on things for too long. Like certain mistakes, I'm like, yeah, I need to really sort of improve myself as a person or um, work on myself as a person and improve. But I'm, you're probably not going to find me like 
down in the dumps, sitting in a corner for longer than a, a day sort of thing. Because mm. what benefit does that have to, to me or to anyone, really? Um, so, yeah, then I got injured on trial. And the same sort of thing happened after that. Went back home, had a few months sort of going out again, enjoying myself. Because I was injured, I couldn't really do much. Um, Christmas came around, January came around, said to Dad, let's train again, like, let's get into it. Because I, th- I thought about giving up after that and going into sort of normal work I suppose and like work with the old man or sort of try and qualify in something and Mm. go from there um but having a few months away mentally refreshing got me back in the mindset I wanted to be a professional cricketer again um and then yeah we me and dad trained again and sort of got up to speed and um Mark Robinson at Sussex well Paul mum's husband now actually knew the coach at Sussex Mark Robinson and <clears throat> he was like any chance you could give him a trial and he was like yeah come down have a bowl and then Essex um, one of the coaches from at Essex was from Yorkshire he'd obviously gone from Yorkshire to Essex and I'd still got on with him mm. um, and he was like yeah come for a trial so I trialed at both those counties and Went really well, both of them like scored runs, took wickets, both offered me a contract. Um, but Sussex had injuries, with, and obviously you never want people to get injured, but it gave me yeah. the opportunity. Essex didn't have injuries, and they couldn't guarantee that I was going to play first team cricket. So I was like, I really want to play first team cricket. Like, I don't want to play second team cricket. I want to play first team, and now I'm good enough, and now I can do it. Um, so I was like, all right, I'm going to sign for Sussex, and played my first game for them in April 2014 or 15. I can't remember which year it was. I'm not very good with dates, actually. (laughs) And, um, yeah, my debut, I scored 100 on debut, took eight wickets in the game. and Eight wickets in one game? Yeah, so we bowled twice, so I took Mm. four and four. I thought you meant in one mini game. Mini game, one innings. Innings. Yeah, so took eight wickets in the game, got 100 runs on my debut, which was rare enough in itself. I think there'd been like four or five people who had done it for Sussex on their debut before that in their 130-year history Um, and broke the record for the highest ever partnership by a 10th wicket. What's a partnership? So you bat with someone like a person and put on a combined amount of runs. Um. Yeah, I did that with Matt Hopton, who passed away a couple of years later. I told you that before, I think, didn't I? Yeah. But um, he was like my best friend at Sussex, and then it was so weird because I made my debut with him. We put on this record, and it was like unbelievable feeling, the highest of highs I've yeah. ever had. I remember my celebration when I got 100. It was just like pure emotion and like an out of experience again where I'm just like screaming. And you can hear it on the camera <laughs> yeah. that's recording it. And that's 100 yards away. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was... That must have been hard when he... Yeah, when he passed, I was in South Africa um, with mum and Paul and got a phone call and it was like, Hobbsy's died. I was like, what? Matt Hobden, for anyone who doesn't know, yeah. Um, nickname Hobbsy, Goose, whatever. <laughs> and I was like, what? Like, didn't really yeah. believe it. I was like, what are you talking about? He's died. He's like, he's falling through a roof. and What? Fall through a roof? Like an accident? Uh, yeah, it must have been. There, he went to Scotland for a New Year's Eve party. They were on the roof, like, I think there was a terrace roof <gasps> looking oh at the stars. God. Probably had a few drinks and, yeah, apparently fell through the roof and died instantly. I don't really know the full. I never really wanted to find out. Just, like, yeah, I remember speaking to his mum, because I was close to him, and he was, um, he was number 19 at Sussex, and there was a little bit of time where I thought about taking his number for my shirt, um, but then I thought it's probably better if it's re- if the number's retired, because if I wore 19 for that reason, but then didn't fin- like, but then finished at Sussex, someone else could just wear it for no reason, mm. so then now the number 19 at Sussex can't be worn by anyone else. So yeah. it's been retired forever, which is quite a nice thing. Yeah, that's thing. nice. Um, but he would have played for England. Like he was really? so he was such a good bowler. Yeah, 
and we did everything together when I first joined. Um, so that was obviously another setback, really. Um, quite a tough few months. I remember I was like, I remember I was dreaming him die for ages and like waking really? up. Wake, Before it happened? After. Oh. Like and cr- waking up crying. So oh. I wake up crying, it'd be like 3 a.m. A week later, I wake up at 2 a.m. crying. And I like, it was really vivid and... Um, I think it sort of just shows how close we, we were. Um, I don't really portray my emotions that well, but people that do know me know I'm quite emotional, aren't I, really? Like, not as stone-walled as... Yeah, he's quite soft. <laughs> yeah, as people think. Um, like, the people close to you, you are very yeah emotional. Um, so that was tough, but I think it also gave me, like, the fire to do it for him for a bit as well like I remember I had that for a, at least a year where I was like if I found anything tough I'd be like why are you finding it tough for like Hobbs would be like with you and you'd be mm. cruising sort of yeah. thing and I had that for a while and probably puts life into perspective does, like when yeah. things like that happen I feel like it always puts life in perspective for you um and it makes you think about things differently and it opens your eyes up and then your little worries aren't Exactly. But aren't even worries anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and I think even, although I used to never worry about the past, after that incident, even more so was I looking forward and mm. um, always trying to think positive. And even now I never look at negative of any situation, always trying to look at the positive. Um, I think it helps in sport to, to be like that. Because yeah, you have to be. People can dwell on things so much that it really gets them down. Um, well you get a lot of people talking about you yeah. and having their own opinions on you and you don't even get to say anything you get a lot of hate the media just want to crucify you all the time which... you get hate for existing which i actually <laughs> yeah. found wild which um we're going to touch on this on a different episode aren't we like media and how it sort of comes out and this sh- random it's really yeah it's, a, it's really weird if you haven't <laughs> that's disgusting if you haven't like experienced it then it's quite a weird situation because you're almost made the scapegoat for, for stuff you haven't done but they can just write they can almost write what they want to make a story yeah if there's a little bit of relevance maybe because they just they really want the clicks exactly yeah um but we'll speak about that in a yeah another it's episode. actually wild like i had no idea yeah um but yeah i played so now i've played for sussex for eight years i think it's going to be my ninth season um obviously played for england for three had a central contract this is my third year of central contract um and that's sort of that's sort of my story yeah and then you played for england and yeah that's a whole media story in itself again yeah another story (laughs) you've had quite a lot of um Mm. say troublesome moments difficult moments you've had to have thick skin for yeah it's just taught me to so i don't really know it's it's it's, weird because like if you were to read up about you you sound like an evil person mm. but having known you and knowing you i'm like he's so nice and you just say nice things about everyone all the time and you're such like a kind person and i'm like it's polar opposite than what online says it's actually crazy yeah and people see me like celebrate when i get a wicket and send someone off and they're like he's a jerk or whatever but yeah. it's just you pure do look like one though it's just pure emotion <laughs> do you know what i mean <laughs> I'm not going to sit here and say you look great when you do it. I know, but it's just you look pure scary. emotion and it's yeah. hard to control. It's nothing But against... that's you on the pitch. Like if anyone was playing yeah. like a football game and they score a goal, everyone goes... Rah. Yeah, but people don't understand that But that's not that actually either. what you... You're not walking around going like... Rah. No, exactly. <laughs> but, yeah. And now we're here. We're about to go to India. And yeah, now we're here, about to go to India. And it's your first time playing... First time playing in India? I've been there, but not played, yeah. Mm. Carried the drinks for the whole... Carried the drinks? Carried the drinks. Like 12 men carried the drinks. Sorry, what? You never heard that? That might be in your book. I don't know. I, all it sounds, Basically, sounded you're very in, like biblical, that. If you're not in the 11 that play, you're like a sub-fielder. Yeah. And like you run drinks onto people that need a drink or... 
Oh. You just help the team in a different way because you can't play. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it sucks. <laughs> yeah, I was like... Because mm. you're not playing and you're mixing drinks, drinks but... It's part mixing of, drinks? It's part of the game. Not cocktails. Well, no, but <laughs> if you want like an electrolyte drink, you have to put the water in, put the tab in. Mm, interesting. And service, service the lads. How do you like playing for England? What are your thoughts on it? Um, I love it. I don't think. Was it everything you expected? Mm, I never expected the media side of it. Mm. Like you, growing up, you don't know that. You just see. I want to be on the field playing that. Yeah, I want to play for England. Mm. I want to win games of cricket for England, and I want to be like a national hero or whatever and I think like it looks great on TV but that's only a small percentage of what you actually do because you have to do interviews and you have to do articles and like I love doing I love kids coming up and being like yeah. can we get a photo or can you sign this like that's quite endearing endearing yeah and heartwarming and it's just the other side of it that's you don't really imagine when you're young. That bit's not that bad, though. I no, think. it's not. But that's like when you become nice bigger and bigger, like some like Stokesy or Coley, like they can't, yeah. they literally can't go out sometimes. Yeah. And it affects your normal life, not just playing for England or playing for your country. Um, but also that it's like someone's out to get you as well every yeah. time. So if you went out and walked into a bar, it'd be like. Ollie Robinson's on the bits again. When actually yeah. you could have just walked into the bar to collect your mum and take her home. Exactly. It's just like those things you don't really for see. account yeah. for. Yeah. Um, but I love playing for England. I love the camaraderie that we've got in this group now. Um, Baz and Stokesy have made it like an unbelievable environment to be a part of. Um, and yeah, it is, it is a dream come true to play for England, really. Um, and like every time I... I'm about to get on the field. I get those butterflies, those nerves. Do you? Yeah, a little bit. Like not nerves, but the, that feeling in my stomach. Like here we go again. Like that excitement. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> here we go again. Here we go again. <laughs> like, you're playing for England again. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's it's cool. And no matter how many times you step on that field, it always feels like the first. Yeah. It always and you always want to like, do your best. Yeah. It always feels like oh, I'm playing for England again. Like it's the yeah. first time. And yeah, it's it's really cool. <laughs> Cool. If you guys have any questions about Ollie's um, story or about cricket or anything, um, you can DM us at, at Chatting Balls Podcast on Instagram. And you can also email in at chattingballspodcast at gmail.com. I mean, I'm sure loads of people have questions for you. Yeah, and any questions. It can be relating to England stuff. It can be like how... How, to deal with things. How to deal with things, yeah. Coaching tips, whatever you guys want, really. I'll, um, yeah, I would I'll advise answer. with the coaching tips to have at least some level of knowledge. If they're asking me about what about cricket things already, they will, won't they? They're not going to say... How to know. bowl a ball. You'll get questions like that. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, if there's enough people, could do like a, a, a meet and greet coaching session. Never know. Oh, really? Anyway, guys, we hope you enjoyed this episode of the podcast, our very first episode. The very first episode. Hopefully, it went down well because it's. I think it's always hard, isn't it, talking about yourself for a long period of time. And you did speak about yourself for a very long period of time. Don't worry, we've still got yours to come up. <laughs> I don't think I could do an hour like you have. If you want to listen to me as right before bed, you'll have a nice deep sleep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm looking forward to yours. I think people need to, need to hear your story and your background. So that'd be mm, cool. We'll see. Yeah, anyway, yeah. guys, thank you so much for tuning in, for listening. Please do go and show us some love um, on all social medias. We appreciate it a lot, don't we? Yeah, definitely. Show us some love and get your questions in the comments or the DMs and we'll get back to you. Amazing. So we'll catch up with you very, very soon. Bye. Bye.